Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today, we're going to be diving into the Rule of 72. What is the Rule of 72? You know, how can it help you? What are we going to use it for? Stuff like that, right? So first off, the Rule of 72 is just a quick, useful formula that it's, it's you know, properly used to estimate the number of years required to double the invested money at a given rate of return, right? So... Uh, while calculators and spreadsheet programs, you know, like, say, Microsoft Excel and stuff like that have built-in functions to accurately calculate the precise time required to double the invested money, the Rule of 72 comes in handy for, like, quick mental calculations or, like, you know, if you pull out your calculator on your phone or something like that. That way you can quickly gauge an approximate value. Um, alternatively, it can compute the annual rate of compounded return from an investment uh, given how many years it takes to double the investment, right? So, we're going to look at the formula for the rule of 72, which is, you know, the years to double equals 72 divided by uh, the interest rate, right? So, you know, you can see here, um, it's so 72 divided by, for our example, it's going to be, you're getting 3% return every year, Right? So that would mean that you, it's going to take you 24 years to double your money, right? So, you know, you could use a 72, um, let's say let's say you were getting a 10% um, a return, right? I mean, that would be 7.2, right? But what if you were getting a 12% return? Well, that would, every six years it would double, right? So on and so forth, right? You see how you can just quickly do these mental calculations. So if someone's like, oh, you know, I'll give you an 8% or... 6% or 10%, 15%. You can see, you know, you can just do it in your head or, you know, if, if you're like me and you like to write things out, like however you want to do it, right? So we're going to talk about how to use the rule of 72, right? The rule of 72 can apply to anything that grows at a compounded rate, right? Population, macroeconomic numbers, charges, loans. Um, so like if... Let's say the GDP, right, the gross domestic product, grows at 4% annually, then the economy would be to expect it to double in about 18 years, right? Not, you know, not exactly, give or take a little bit, right? Um, you know, with regards to the fee that eats into your investment gains, the Rule of 72 can be used to demonstrate the long-term effects of those costs, of those fees, right? So a mutual fund that charges 3% in annual expense fees, right, will reduce the investment principal to half in around 24 years, right? Just like this example we've given, right? So a borrower who pays 12% interest on their credit card or any other form of, of a loan that's charging, you know, like compounded interest or something like that, uh, it, it will double the amount you owe in six years, right? So that's why people say, you know, don't pay the minimum on your credit cards, Right, because if you pay the minimum and it takes you, you know, like if you have, I mean, imagine if, if you have a 20% you know, interest on your credit card, right? I mean, every 3.6 years, you're, it's going to double the amount you owe if you don't pay that off, right? And that's why they say interest will kill you, right? It's just too much. You have to be able to pay the majority, if not all of it off, right? Uh, the rule can also be used to find the amount of time it takes for money's value to half due to inflation, right? So, if inflation is six percent, and you know it's a lot, I think it's I think it's around two percent right now. Uh, but if it's around six percent, then a, a giving a, a given purchasing power of the money will be worth half in around twelve years, right? Seventy-two divided by six equals twelve. So if inflation decreases from 6% to 4%, an investment will be expected to lose half of its value in 18 years instead of 12 years, right? So, you know, you can, if you do 70, uh, if 2% if is now, right, 72 divided by 2, right, 36, so your money would lose half its value in 36 years um, at the current, you know, rate of inflation. Uh, but also... The rule of 72 can be applied across all kinds of durations, provided the rate of return is compounded annually, right? So, <clears throat> let's look at some of these numbers too, right? 
So, if the interest per quarter is 4%, but interest is only compounded annually, then it would take, you know, 72 divided by 4, 18 quarters, or 4.5 years to double the principal. If the population of, say, the U.S. Uh, increases at a rate of 1% per month, it will double in 72 months, or about 6 years, right? So, let's talk about, you know, some some FAQs, right? So, who came up with the rule of 72? Well, everybody, most people, I won't say everybody, most people, they love money, right? They love to see it grow even more. Everybody wants more and more and more, right? So, getting a rough estimate of how much time it will take to double your money also helps the average person compare different investment options, right? However... Uh, mathematical uh, calculations that project an investment's appreciation can be, you know, really complex for, you know, like most people. You know, a lot of people don't like math, right? And it's really hard for some people to do it without, you know, the help of like log tables or a calculator or, you know, those involving compound interest, right? So the Rule of 72 offers a useful shortcut. It's a simplified version of a logarithmic calculation involving complex functions like taking the natural log of numbers, right? The rule applies to the exponential growth of an investment based on a compounded rate of return. So, um, it you know, we talked about how to calculate the rule of 72, right? You take 72 divided by the projected annual return, and that's the number of years approximately. And I want to make sure I keep saying this about or approximately because it's not exact, right? It's, it's you know, if you take... You know, 72 divided by 2 and it's 36, and you're sitting there thinking, okay, in exactly 36 years, but it's not exactly 30. It's, it's a, you know, it could be 36.1, it could be 36.2, like it could, there could be uh, some months before or after, right? You know, it's not exact. It's just to give you a rough estimate, you know, approximately about, right? Um, so, like, let's take another example. So, if an investment promises 8% annual compound rate of return, right? It will take approximately nine years, which is 72 divided by eight, to double that invested money. Now, also, uh, let's note that a compound annual return of 8%, uh, you know, it's plugged in as eight, not as, you know, 8% being like, you know, um, 0.08, right? It's actually just eight. So don't take 72 and divide it by 0.08, right? Uh, so that's how you get. Because if you were to divide 72 by 0 0.08, it would be 900, right? You'd add two zeros on the end of that. So if it takes nine years to double a $1,000 investment, then the investment, <coughs> excuse me, the investment will grow to $2,000 in nine years or in the ninth year, right? 4000 in the 18th year, 8000 in the 27th year, Right, and so on and so forth, right? Every nine years. So in year 36, it would be 16,000, and it just keeps going and going and going and going, right? Uh, so we're going to talk about how this is, you know, I was talking about, you know, approximately, you know, don't use it exact because the rule of 72, it, it's pretty accurate, but it, you know, it's approximate. It's, you know, it could be close to it, right? Because the actual calculation for how to, you know, like the pre precise formula, it's really complicated, right? It's like the time to double, you know, logarithmic function of this divided by the logarithmic function of this. Well, you know, it's just, there's so much going into it, right? But let's talk about the difference between the rule of 72 and the rule of 73. The rule of 72 primarily works with interest rates or rates of return that fall in the range of 6 to 10%. If you're dealing with anything outside that range, Basically, what you're going to do is add or subtract 1 from 72. For every 3 points, the interest rate uh, goes up or down from the 8% threshold. So, let's say you have an 11% compounding interest rate, and it's, that's 3 percentage points higher than 8. So, you would take, you would divide, you would use 73 in this instance instead of 72, right? Uh, for a 14% rate of return, Right, it would be the rule of 74, right? And for a 5% rate of return, that would mean reducing it by one, which would be 
the rule of 71, right? So, you know, for example, let's say you have, let's say it's a 22% rate of return, right? The basic rule of 72 says the initial investment will double in three point, like almost like almost 3.3 years, like 3.25, like 3.27 years. However, since 22 minus 8 is 14, and 14 divided by 3 is 4.7, 4.657, that's about 5. So the adjusted rule should be 72 plus 5 equals 77 for the numerator. And that gives a value of 3.5 years, indicating that you'll have to wait an additional quarter, right, to to double your money compared to the 3.27 from earlier, right? From just using the basic rule of 72. So the period given by the logarithmic equation that we were talking about earlier, the really complicated one, is 3.49. Much closer, right? But again, if we just use, you know, changing every three value range, three points, three percentage basis points, it go up or down how we need to, we can get really close to the actual precise formula. So 3.49 is not far from 3.5, right? So, you know, it's, you know, you have to use it that way so you don't have to use the complicated one, right? So, you know, it just, you know, remember that three percentage up or below. For every 3% higher or lower, you add or subtract one instead of using 72, right? So, you know, I want to I wanna thank everybody for coming you know, I really enjoy, you know, making some of these videos for everybody. You know, actually, I make most of these for some of the people that I currently work with. And so I'm really hoping that everyone else is also enjoying them. And if you do, I hope you wouldn't mind going down and leaving a comment about what you like or don't like. Go ahead and give me a like and a subscribe if you guys wouldn't mind. I'd really appreciate it. And I hope you guys uh, come back for another video. And until then, y'all be safe.